So today the second episode of my series about the 555 chip. In the first episode I explained the function of all the pins of this chip, and I've shown some examples of oscillating or stable circuits, like a buzzer, a siren and an LED blinker. And today let's take a look at a bistable circuit. A circuit that doesn't oscillate, but it's stable in two states. In this case it has an LED as a load at the output and two buttons. And you can flip it on and off using the buttons. This is the on button, and this is the off button. And here is the simple schematic of it. It has a battery or a power supply here, a capacitor on the supply rail for stability. The power supply goes into the supply pins of the chip. The output goes into an LED via a resistor in series. And to flip it on and off it's using two inputs of the chip. The pin 4 reset to turn it off using this button, and the pin 2 trigger to turn it on using this button. The buttons activate the inputs by pulling the voltage down on them, and when the button is not pressed the voltage is pulled up using these pull up resistors. So that's a simple two button on off circuit, and of course somebody is probably asking what happens if I press both the buttons at the same time, and it's actually off. And it stays off unless the off button is released first and then the on button. If I release the on button a second it will be on, if I release the off button a second it will be off. And the reset input has a priority over the trigger input, and that's why the LED is off when I hold both the buttons. And of course the pin 6, the threshold input, has to be connected to the zero volt rail or negative rail when it's not used. And there is always some schematic on the internet where it's wrong, the pin 6 must not be floating like this. Another, yet another, and of course an LED with no resistor can't be missing. And there is an alternative version which uses pin 6 to turn it off instead of the pin 4, but the pin 6 is activated by pulling it up, not down, so this input has the button in the positive rail and the pull-up resistor, which in this case is the pull-down resistor actually, in the negative rail. It works more or less the same, I can turn it on and off. There is just one difference in the behavior, when you press both it's actually on, because now the on button has a priority. And again when you press both and release them, the final state depends on which one you release second. So these are the two versions of the two button on off circuit with a 555 chip. And then there is also a single button on off circuit. And here's the schematic of it. The output again goes into an LED via a resistor, but it also goes via this resistor into this capacitor. So when it's on the capacitor is charged, and when it's off it's discharged. And this basically changes the behavior of the button depending on if it's on or off. If it's off it turns it into an on button, and if it's on it turns it into an off button. When you press the button the voltage from the capacitor goes into the inputs. The two inputs Input 2 and 6 are connected one with another, and they are connected to a resistive divider of two equal resistors, and this normally keeps the input set half the supply voltage. And the input 6 requires more than two thirds of the supply voltage to make the output go low, or turn off basically, and the input 2 requires the voltage to go below one third of the supply voltage to flip the output high, or turn on. So these resistors basically keep the voltage at the input at a level where none of the inputs flips the output. When it's off the output is low, it discharges this capacitor via this resistor end, so pressing the button basically brings zero volts to the inputs, and it activates the input 2, which if the voltage is low enough flips the output up, and now it's on. And this charges the capacitor via the resistor end, when you press the button again you bring a positive voltage to the inputs, and the voltage on the capacitor is higher than two thirds of the supply voltage, so the input 6 activates and flips the output low, and it's off. But of course if the output went straight into the inputs via the button, it would oscillate when you press the button. But you needed to change its state just once when you press the button. That's why there is this capacitor which is charged via a high resistance resistor. The input is basically just get a pulse from the capacitor, it flips once and doesn't change its state for the second time. Because only the charge on this capacitor can change the voltage at this resistive divider, but not the output itself, because it's connected via a resistor much higher than these resistors. And this is actually important for this to operate properly, this resistor has to have a higher resistance than these resistors. 
the current coming from this resistor can't overcome these resistors, only the charge on this capacitor. Let's say the supply voltage is 6 volts, so the threshold values are 4 volts and 2 volts. The resistive divider keeps the inputs at 3 volts, half of the supply voltage, so none of the inputs triggers. This one requires more than 4 volts, and this one less than 2 volts. And the output is low now, let's say it's off, which basically discharges the capacitor to the same level. And now we press the button and it momentarily pulls the inputs down to the capacitor voltage level. Then the capacitor equalizes with the resistive divider and goes back to 3 volts and so it can't flip again. Now the output goes high and the capacitor will slowly charge to this level. So when you press the button again it pulls the inputs high momentarily. So the output goes slow again. And of course the capacitor slowly discharges and prepares for the next cycle. So when you press the button again it pulls the inputs down momentarily. This makes the output go high, the capacitor goes with it and it all repeats. Of course more accurately the voltage on the capacitor is copying the voltage at the input when the button is pressed and then when the button is released it charges based on the voltage on the output and the other way as well. Here the button is pressed, here it's released the button is basically pressed from here to here, and from here to here. Now let's try to see what happens if I increase the value of this capacitor. When the capacitor is 100 nanofarads, it reacts quite quickly. Now let's change it to 1 microfarad, which is 10 times more. And now it reacts when you press it slowly, but when you press it quickly, it doesn't react. It only reacts to a slower pressing. That's because now the higher capacitance capacitor takes longer to charge or discharge via this resistor. Now let's try to change the value of this resistor. I will use a 7.5 kilo ohm resistor, which is a lower resistance than these two, and the circuit will not work. I can't turn it off now. When the resistance of this one is lower than these two, it can't operate. But otherwise the values are not critical. This one just has to be higher than these two, and these two have to be the same value. I went back to the original, and it works again. And of course you can use this circuit with two LEDs. One going from the positive to the output, and one from the output to the negative, just like I did it in the previous episode. And you could also flip it and the negative level could mean on and the positive off. And to the single button on off circuit you can also add some sort of an emergency off button, which only turns it off and not on. And this is done by adding a resistor here and the button here. So these were the bistable circuits with a 555 chip, the single button on off circuit and a two button on off circuit. And in the next episode let's take a look at a monostable circuit or timer with a 555 chip. So that's it and if you like my videos please consider supporting this channel on Patreon, using the thanks button and subscribing. And a big thanks to all of you who already support me because this channel couldn't exist without you.